season. Posted at last. The questions were asked in this campaign, and he came up with the answers. I'm loving every minute of it. Celtic champions three years running, six times in eight years. On the other two occasions, they lost out on incredible final days. Not this time, not today, not on this final day. Third time lucky. But then Celtic are really caught short when it comes to spirit, determination and character. They do tend to reflect their manager. Just like that, they've stuck together. They've shown belief. They've dug deep. And that's what he'll be telling them. He deserved it. He worked hard for it. He took them right to the end to get it. But Gordon Strachan has always been tenacious. He was that as a player. He's continued that as a manager. Never said that he's for it. And that's what's gotten him through. An arduous, grueling and very emotional season in Scotland. Draws to a close. Celtic champions for the third year running. This time, though, it was against all odds. This time it was close. Very, very close. What a big part Paul Hartley has played. Summed it up tonight. Magnificent display from both Hartley and Robson. The podium is being prepared, the helicopter has landed. You'll never walk alone, you bet. Celtic remembering one of their greats. A gentleman and a legend, Tommy Burns. Celtic have snatched a few late victories during Gordon Strachan's reign as manager. Now they've snatched a late title. They've taken it out of the grasp of their Glasgow rivals, Rangers. They've got to pick themselves up for the cup final on Saturday. But uh, not too many around us here at Tannadice are too worried about that. The final day belongs to Gordon Strachan and to Celtic. Six or seven weeks ago, they couldn't really have dreamt of this. It's just pure joy on their faces. It is now time to party, to enjoy it, to soak it up. They haven't had that chance in this running because it's been so tense. And now there's release there. It's all over for them. They've come a long way. Scott Brown came on for the last half hour to do his bit. This is why he came to Celtic to win trophies. Arthur Boritz, well, Milan want him, by all accounts. Could be on his way. Will be sorely missed by Celtic if he does go. There are quite a few of these Celtic fans around us in this stand, and this stand is actually jumping up and down. Incredible atmosphere. Just look at that sight. Really amazing. Well, let's have a word with the man who will soon lift the SPL trophy. Stephen McManus is with Stuart Lovell. Stephen, three years in a row for you. How does it feel? Yeah, it's great, obviously. We had a lot of motivation for this game today. We wanted to win the game ourselves. We managed to do that, and it's a great feeling for all the, for ourselves. So, maybe six or seven weeks ago, there was folk all over the country written us off, but we always believed that we could do it. And it's been great to, to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, does it give you extra satisfaction, the fact that six or seven weeks ago, you looked down and out, a lot of character from this squad to, to turn things around? Of course it does, you know. <laughs> 
course it does, you know, it's, there's nothing better in football than proving people wrong. I suppose and, and it's about the place. <laughs> It's just a great, it's just brilliant for everything, you know. And from, from your, your own personal perspective, uh, very satisfying, wonderful feeling for you to, to win the title on your first year as captain. Yeah, it's great, but it's not just about individuals, it's about the full team. All right. Thanks very much for your time, well done. Well, he's one of the game's good guys too, Stephen McManus, Celtic's youngest captain since Billy McNeil. The man who took over the captaincy from Neil Lennon, who of course is now back at Celtic, joining in the celebrations. Yeah, he's been a rock for Celtic this season. A big time player, a good captain. He's played almost all the games. A great defensive record. Celtic preparing to step forward and take the trophy. Rangers beat the Pitodri, and here at Tannadice, it finished on the United nil, Celtic won. Yeah, Celtic kept the faith when those around them were happily writing off their title chances six weeks ago. Back they've come with a vengeance. What an amazing title turn around, and a magnificent seven wins on the bounce in the SPL have them as champions again. Craig Burley and John Hartson with me in the studio, John, uh, your old gaffer, three titles on the trot, emulating Jock yes. Steen and Willie Maley, the only other Celtic managers who've done it. Yes, it's a fantastic achievement, I would personally like to just congratulate the players, Gordon Strachan and everybody involved at Celtic really for their achievements first of all, you know, it's three in a row, I personally was one of them players that Steve McManus said then, I was personally one of them players that felt they couldn't do it, I thought it was beyond them, I thought Rangers had it completely wrapped up. And Celtic have done, they've won seven games in a row, including two old firm games, and they thoroughly deserve it. Uh, so I again would just like to congratulate them. There will be those who will say, Craig, that uh, Rangers have thrown this away with, I think, 12 points from their last nine league games, but Celtic have done exactly what was asked of them. Well, there'll be those that will say that uh, Rangers' backlog effects has caught up with them, and I think it will be hard to argue against that. What you can't argue against is that Celtic were asked five, six weeks ago to pile the pressure on Rangers and they did that. You've got to give them credit for that. They performed well when the pressure was on. I think the Rangers result tonight showed Rob that they are out on their feet up at Aberdeen. We were watching the game in the monitor. They hardly created any chances but you know Celtic did the business when they wanted. Wonderful delivery in from Paul Hartley and Vinny to Heslink doing what he's paid to do and uh, great atmosphere through here at Tannadice tonight. Big name, big goal, Jan Venegar of Heslink sealed Celtic's title triumph and the message is that was for Tommy Barnes. The presentation and all the reaction to come. Don't take your eye off the ball. Clydesdale Bank, always on the ball. What a season it's been, live on Satanta. It's and next season we've got this and much, much more. Including World Cup qualifiers featuring England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland and Northern Ireland. England home friendlies, the FA Cup and the FA Community Shield. What a combination! Like football, love Satanta Sports. Polaris World, we have a wide range of properties for sale, including superb two-bedroom apartments from only €119,000 and magnificent detached villas starting at under €250,000. Enjoy our full range of amenities or simply relax in the sunshine. 
Call 0800 0233 500 and receive a free discovery pack including a complimentary DVD. Discover life. Discover Polaris World. At Magnus, we've long understood the importance of making time. And I ask your friend, what's a fella to do? Cause her hair's black and her eyes are blue. Oh, and I lost my heart to a Galway girl. Magnus Irish Cider. Time dedicated to you. Qantas, the Australian airline, is also the world's most experienced, having flown continuously for over 87 years. That's longer than any other airline. And it shows in our customer service and operational excellence. Qantas, the world's most experienced airline. Pedro was bold to climb, but he started to take things too far. He started climbing covered in oil, then blindfolded with his hands tied behind his back, using only his chin to anchor himself to the rock face. If only he'd seen Ladbrokescasino.com, his drill boards would have been quenched for good. To help Britain be a little greener, this year we're sending every one of our customers four free energy-saving light bulbs. Giving Britain the green light to save energy. British Gas, your energy experts. you never know when an IT problem might strike. BT offers all business customers 24-7 IT and communication support. These are intelligent molecules. They know where to go. When they're needed, they instantly respond, going to the parts of the engine that need protection most, shielding it with an extra layer of active protection. Castrol Magnatech. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Don't take your eye off the ball. Clydesdale Bank. Always on the ball. So the Clydesdale Bank Premier League ends up looking like this. Celtic have won their 42nd title on a dramatic final night at Tannadice. one nil winners here, thanks to Jan Venegar of Hesselink School. 89 points for them, and they win by three because, meantime, Rangers were losing at the Tawdry. By two goals to nil, they finished on 86. A magnificent transformation in the Rangers team this season, orchestrated by Walter Smith, but in the end, They've run out of gas and Celtic have gone into the overtaking lane and won the title. Motherwell third and Aberdeen finish fourth. Coming up on Satanta Sports Live, Golden League Athletics from Oslo, the legendary Bislett event. The world's top athletes competing for a jackpot of a million dollars Friday, June 6. The SPL jackpot has been won by Celtic and there's certainly no harm in repeating the fact that Gordon Strachan has led Celtic to a third title on the trot and that's the first time that's happened since the late great Jock Steen was around. It's a magnificent achievement and uh, well six weeks ago it seemed somewhere between highly unlikely and mission impossible and that makes a title win tastes very sweet, oh, Craig. That makes it very special. As I say, the last uh, two years for them has been uh, the work's been done. You know, first six, seven, eight months of the season, 
this year, all the graph, although working hard at the start, all the graph in the last six to eight weeks, uh, when it's been, when they've been up against it, when the pressure's been on, when the fans have been giving them a bit of stick. Not too long ago, he took Scott McDonald off uh, at home and was absolutely battered from pillar to post. Uh, but McDonald's been a great signing for him, and, and ultimately his decisions have been justified. Very good at Hesling, another one has taken a fair bit of stick. And I'll hold my hands up and say I've given him some as well. He's not my favourite player, but he's delivered again tonight. So all the key players have delivered. It was a close game, but Celtic never really looked in trouble tonight for me. How big a decision, how important a decision for Gordon Strachan was replacing Brown and Donati in central midfield yeah. with Hartley and Robson? Is that this won the title in many ways? Well, I just think, you know, Hartley, for me, I've been critical of Paul Hartley early on this season because I felt he didn't offer Celtic what we saw at Hearts. You know, Paul Hartley was a player at Hearts. He thrived on responsibility. He took the penalties, you know, the free kicks, the corners, and he came to Celtic and he weren't really getting a kick. When he did play, he weren't at his best. Gordon decided to change it. Donati was a player that obviously Gordon paid big money for. Decided to stick with him for long periods of the season. Brave decision taking him out. And I feel Hartley and Robson have been pivotal, really, in Celtic kicking on and eventually winning the title. You know, but to think that sort of eight weeks ago, nine weeks ago, there was so not just a minority, but a majority of the supporters wanting Gordon Strack out of the football club. You know, I must, I've got to say, not from inside the club, certainly not from any of the of anybody coming from inside, um, and obviously the players were always supportive of Gordon Strack, and so it's some achievement. The goal went three in a row. You know, Jockstein did something special for Celtic, and Gordon has, has equalled, obviously, three in a row, has bettered what several managers have failed to do since they come to the club. I think Robson's been a big player for them as well. John just mentioned it. I, I do think, I agree with what you said, Rob. I think it was a key decision to take the Natty out of the side. I and mean, I'm not singling the fell out, but what did they need in the last eight weeks of the season? They needed people to roll their sleeves up. And I thought he had to get the Scottish lads to get that. They went in at Aberdeen and won 5 0 or 5 1. It was uh, Brown and Hartley. And I think he got real dig from his side that he wasn't getting at the time. It was a big decision and one that's paid off. That's Stephen Hunt of the Clydesdale Bank holding the trophy and just wait for the noise when this makes its appearance. Back to Scott Booth, back to Ian Crocker. Here's Rob, here it comes. This is what it's all been about in the last nine months. The SPL trophy has familiar ribbons on it. Celtic are singing their songs. It's been a week of tears for everyone involved in this famous club. But at last, some smiles. Seems to be about double the amount of Celtic fans in the stadium now than, than there was during the game. I think those that were lurking outside have made it in to Tannadice to be part of this mammoth celebration. Celtic champions of Scotland for the 42nd time. And it really did not look too likely. They lost at Ibrox at the end of March and a week later lost at home to Motherwell. That was that, wasn't it? No. Not where Celtic are concerned. How hard did they have to work for that piece of silver? Grind all the way. It's about the last seven weeks. They were asked to go and win every game. Many believed they couldn't do that. They have proved a lot of people wrong. Just can't wait to get out and see. You want their hands on it. They're a team in a hurry to get out there and you can't blame them for that. Seven wins on the spin to end the season with to secure the title. That tunnel is toiling at the moment. The Celtic players gathered waiting to emerge into this arena to receive adulation and appreciation from the mass ranks of the Celtic fans who are here. It's a 
special night for these faithful followers. And of course, there will be plenty more watching in most corners of the world, joining in in their own special way. Not a bullet. All he does is win time as a Celtic. Read of the Clivesdale Bank and let's go. There'll be the presentation committee awaiting Celtic and Venegora Hesseling with two of the biggest goals he'll ever score. That stoppage time winner against Rangers. It set the ball rolling really for Celtic. And then the winner here today. Familiar sight, a familiar feeling. Celtic champions yet again, three years running. Time for a cuppa. Gordon Strachan has done it again. Celtic have showed their powers of recovery again. That's what you call pretty laid back, isn't it? Coming on the park with a cup of tea. Carter Boritz making his way through, and Barry Robson, who left under United for Celtic in January. That's why Nakamura and Bobo Balde. Stephen Presley, all smiles. They've all played their part. No time to enjoy it. He certainly played his part. Three titles in three seasons and a lot more besides for Gordon Strachan. Now we wait for the captain. Celtic's youngest captain since Billy McNeil. He'll be there in a moment. There's another Celtic title winning party about to begin. Stephen Stephen Manus waits to get to grips with the trophy. He's got his medal, he's got his trophy, seemingly down and out in April, champions in May. From mission impossible to mission accomplished, it's a title for Tommy. It's a title for Celtic. It all ended in fireworks. The players deserve that. Paul Hartley, different class. Mark Wilson, third title. Incredible. And when the dig was needed, he provided it. Harry Caldwell gets his hands on the famous trophy. Aidan McGeady, the Players' Player of the Year. And Gordon Strachan. Much more than this. Three titles in three seasons, a CIS Cup, a Scottish Cup, and significant progress in the Champions League. He may not be Mr. Popular at times, but you cannot argue with that fantastic record. Gordon Strachan, 
follows Willie Maley almost a century ago and the great Jockstein in winning three successive titles for Celtic Football Club. Will he stay or will he go? Surely he must be winning over those Celtic fans by now. Legendary, three titles on the trot. He works very hard. Well, let's have a listen to Celtic's favourite song as they celebrate another title. Celtic family, one big happy family. Inakamura, taken off tonight. Swept the awards board last season, but a lot of football caught up with him this season. Even so, he's won the title again. And Barry Robson there, back in his former club, the catalyst, Gordon Strachan says for this late search to the title. The energised Celtic as they embarked on that remarkable winning run which has brought them to this point, this title winning point. Yeah, I think if Barry Robson had played more games for Celtic when he first came, instead it was Donati and Brown was in there, but I think if he played from the start and continued, for me, he'd have been player of the year. He's just shown in the last seven, eight matches what he's made of. I don't think Sankras is going to let that go in a hurry. <laughs> he was going nowhere fast at Manchester City before joining Celtic on loan. Sankras' future unclear, so too Strachan's, so too Boris. But that is for another day. Today's the day that Celtic won the title again. Aidan McGeady, an outstanding talent. And Matt the Knife, Tommy Burns' favourite song being played here now. And Celtic will certainly never, ever, ever forget him. One of the game's true gentlemen. John Reid, the chairman, congratulating Gordon Strachan. Celtic 
We're made to wait by Rangers' hectic fixture schedule. The season extended to a Thursday night. Let's hear from Scott McDonald now with Stuart. Scott, your first trophy for Celtic. How does that feel? Very special. Um, uh, words can't describe. You know, it meant so much to everyone today as well. And ever since Saturday, when you know Motherwell got draw against Rangers, you know everyone's just been thinking about it, thinking about this game. And you know those last four days were the longest days of my life. You know, I'm just glad it's glad it's done now, and we got a great victory. And um, you know, I see we've won by points, which makes it even sweeter. It's amazing to think that three years ago you were in this this unusual tussle between Celtic and Rangers. You were the bad guy that day. It must be wonderful to be on the right side of things today. Yes, it kind of makes up for things, but you know, it's been a wonderful season for me personally and, and for the whole team. And to come it off the way we have, you know, it's been great. You know, and um, you know, it's just, it's just you know, obviously you can't you can't describe it. And, you know, to do it for Tommy and, and also for Phil. You know, the, I know they're looking down on us right now. You know, very proud with a big smile on both their faces and God rest both their souls. Tell us about how great it's been, the atmosphere here tonight. It's almost been like a home game for Celtic. It has. Look at all the Celtic fans who appeared all of a sudden in the Dundee United. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, and um, it's just fantastic this time on the last day of the season that, you know, obviously put things right this time and uh, it was great. This must whet your appetite for more in the future. Oh, yeah, it does, but let, let us enjoy this first day. But can I just say one more thing? You know, um, I want to give a big shout out to my mum and dad and my two brothers. I love you all. I know you've been watching the coverage all, all this year through Satana, so we did it! Brilliant, well done. Thanks, Thank Scott. Thank you. And he certainly did it. 31 goals for Scott McDonald this season. Barry Robson, a title winner after leaving Tannadice for Celtic. There was a Celtic invasion of the City of Discovery today. And those that couldn't get in the ground for the match have got in now for the party. The party that started when Jan Venegora Hesseling broke the deadlock here. And what a colossal contribution he has made in the past couple of months to Celtic. He's taken a fair bit of stick this season, not quite as much as Gordon Strachan though. Strachan has been tumbled from pillar to post at times. Yet he's had the last word on a final day that, for the most part, stayed in Celtic's favour. Rangers beaten at Aberdeen, but Celtic got a win here, and that will mean something to them. Not as much as another title, though. But uh, Boric will be coveted by some big clubs in Europe, Milan, supposedly interested. Celtic, by the way, goes straight into the Champions League next season. No qualifiers, straight in to join the elite of Europe. At this rate, I think they'll be going home about five in the morning. Yeah, it's great to see the players enjoying themselves at the end of a long, hard season. It's just now we can actually look back at what an achievement it's been. Three titles in the trot. We've used more or less all of our players. Samaras there popped up with a few important goals as well. Let's have a word now with Barry Robson. He is with Stuart. Barry, talk to us about this atmosphere that you're experiencing at the moment. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. I just. I think the boys have been so good the last two months, it's been hard. We've been put under pressure and we've answered everybody wrong. And I've shown everybody how strong we are as a team and how strong we are as a unit. And we've come out fighting and we've won the title for it. It's incredible to think that about two months or so ago you needed to win all seven of your last remaining games and to even give yourselves a chance. You've done that and you've won with three points to spare. Yeah, the manager always said to us all along, believe, believe, believe. And the amount of the players have got big hearts in that dressing room. And I thought I showed it the whole way in the last two months. And we're just going to keep on fighting the way we did and we managed to get the league in the end. The players have been very keen to point out that this was a tribute to Tommy Burns tonight. It must be so satisfying to get the job done here and be able to, to do what you all wanted to do. Yeah, the worst thing for me personally was I'm not going to be 
great about work with Toby Burns. I could have learned so much from him as a person, as a man, and as a coach. And that was the hardest thing for me because I only got to work with him for two or three months, but I liked to work with him for two or three years because he was that good a coach. And it's going to be a sad day for everyone at Celtic and everywhere I put Celtic fans across the world because he was such a good man. It's quite ironic that you're here to, to win the trophy, your old stomping ground tenderised, but it must be must be a brilliant night for you. Yeah, it's a great night, and uh, Dun Dundee United fans had great fans as well, had great times here, but I had to move on, and, I, and this is why I moved on, because I think I've got more chance of doing things like this when I'm here. And I'm delighted I'm here now, and I'm delighted I've picked up my first medal, and I just want a lot more. Thanks, Barry, go and enjoy yourself. Thank you. It is such a fitting tribute, this, to Tommy Burns. I think he would have approved all this? Just a bit. Celtic are off on another lap of honour. Next up, it's the Players' Player of the Year, Aidan McGeady. Aidan, sum up how you're feeling just now. <coughs> uh, I can't wait this game, but I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely delighted. It was a tough game, I didn't think we were going to score, I didn't look that way, I mean, I missed a good chance. Jan had a couple of chances, and I thought it was going to be one of those nights, but... Obviously we had Rangers, we're losing all the fans and the lifting us a bit and Brian got the goal, so uh, absolutely wasn't. Does it make it even more satisfying that you've won on the last game of the season because the previous two years it's, it's been a bit of a canter for Celtic? Uh, and also the fact that uh, Rangers landed for us a few years ago, so we're getting our own back. Of course, when you think about this season, it's been a wonderful season for you, but you said to me about two months ago it would only matter if you had a championship medal at the end of it, so you must be so satisfied. Of course I'm satisfied. Uh, it's not been a perfect season, but I mean we've, we've, done, we've done amazingly to get back in it and win the league. So uh, I think I'm going to be pleased with myself. I know you were very close to Tommy Burns. Were you thinking about him during that match? Yeah, I've <clears throat> crossed my mind a few times, yeah. I mean, obviously uh, Tommy's looking down there and uh, gives us a bit of luck tonight. And talk, tell us about Gordon Strachan because it's amazing to think Celtic fans have given him a bit of stick. Some of them have anyway, but three, three times in, in a row. There's only two other ma managers in the history of the club who have done that. Of course, I mean, I said before, people are, people are pretty quick to forget. So, his record here has been caught, but it's been really, very, very good. So, uh, I mean, I think the fans who are, were cursing a few months ago may change their tune. Aidan, it's been wonderful to watch you this season. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Aidan McGeady, terrific. But uh, Celtic's recovery in the last few weeks has been a tremendous team effort. Yeah, McGeady has been a revelation for me this season. He really brightened up this campaign for me. Glorious to watch. And he'll just get better and better, I think. I wonder what Dermot Desmond makes of all this. Let's find out. Dermot, what do you make of this atmosphere tonight? It's wonderful. A great occasion. Hasn't happened for 40 years, so we should celebrate. So hopefully it won't take another 40 years for us to win the treble, but it's a wonderful occasion, especially in how we won it coming back from really with no chance. Very proud of the team, very proud of Gorn, very proud of everybody concerned with the club. And of course, you, you know how hard people work, not just Gordon Strachan. You, you know how hard people work at Celtic, not just Gordon Strachan, but his backroom staff, the players, the supporters travel the lengths and breadth of the country to watch this team. Well, I think we've got the best supporters in the world. Uh, we've got a great manager. Got a great support and services, and I think we just kept them going. They believed in themselves, and they came through the end. Congratulations, the Rangers! They've had a great season, and they've been unlucky. They have so many t games, but nevertheless, that's football. But we won. We won the title by points, not goal difference, and I'm delighted. Celtic have been on the receiving end of the the, the wrong result, if you like, in the past when you. <laughs> We've been, we've been on the wrong road. I've been at those two occasions, which were heartbreaking. In other words, third time lucky, but it's a great feeling. And we're just going to celebrate, enjoy the moment, enjoy this experience. And I'm so delighted. I can't tell you how thrilled I am for everybody concerned with Celtic and all the Celtic supporters and the fans around the world. And I guess this must whet the appetite for everyone at the club to try and go for a fourth successive title. Like we'd like to go fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, ninth and tenth. So, we're, no, we're, our ambition is... It increases with this. Our ambition is, 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 is to do well in Europe next year, to do well in the domestic competitions and to play better football. I think that's Gordon's ambition, that's the way he wants to play football, that's the way we want to play football in Celtic. 
and hopefully we'll continue to progress. Dermot, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy the night. My pleasure. Thank you. I think Neil Lennon's trying to look for a medal there. Stephen McManus pays tribute to Tommy Burns. The championship race went to the wire, but Celtic just love leaving it late. Tommy Burns clinched a title for Celtic on this ground in 1981. It was Jan Venegor of Hesselink's turn to do that this time. Although Rangers defeated Aberdeen, helped Celtic's cause as well. Let's hit with Big Jan. He's with Stuart. Jan, what a fantastic night this must be for everyone at the club. Yeah, it's incredible. If you're a leader fans, it's, it's about Tommy Burns. It's a tribute to him, I think. The only thing we could win, and we could win it for him, and we did it, and uh, it's great for Well, there are a few nerves tonight because there was so much at stake. You didn't really know what was happening with, with, with Rangers' game at Patodra. You had to concentrate on your own job, of course. Yeah, of course, and uh, at the end, you finally get the goal. And uh, sometimes you're the supporters, you're cheering, and you don't know really what's going on. It was uh, nerve-wracking, but at the end, uh, it was a great day. And, uh, I think you can look back at the whole year and be really satisfied. And a nice moment for you to score the winning goal tonight, because supporters always remember that when you lift the trophy on the, on the same day. Well, it's always nice. It uh, doesn't matter who scores. Today it was me. Uh, of course, it's a nice, nice feeling in a, in a game like this. But... Thanks very much for your time. Have a great night. It's three years to the day since Celtic lost the title on the last day since then, three out of three, and tributes to Tommy Burns on a highly emotional night. Celtic are champions. It's a... Don't take your eye off the ball. Clydesdale Bank. Always on the ball. Tributes to Tommy Burns to start the night at Tanadice. High tension at Spitodri with Rangers looking to overhaul Celtic in the battle for the SPL Championship. Who would hold their nerve? A big chance for Carlos Cuellar as Rangers struggled to get a breakthrough at the Tawdry. At Tanadice, Aidan McGeady with a golden chance to get them in front. Zaluska made the save. And again to deny former United midfielder Barry Robson. Stuart Duff almost fired Aberdeen in front at the Tawdry. And what an opportunity for Mark De Vries to spoil the Celtic script. Frustration at the Tawdry for Walter Smith, Gordon Strachan pointing the way ahead for Celtic, but no penalty for Shunsky Nakamura. Just that yellow card for diving. Danny Swanson was looking to upset the apple cart with that effort tipped over by Arthur Boric. And there was where Rangers' title chances perished. Celtic immediately added a goal of their own. Jan Venegren of Hesselink and any remote possibility of a Rangers revival in the North East removed by firstly Dan Mackey's goal and that crazy challenge from Nacionova which saw him sent off full-time at Tanadice sparked major celebrations and up in the air the SPL trophy was on the move from Arief Edzel to Tayside to Tanadice and about to be handed over to Stephen McManus. Seemingly down and out in April, champions in May. A spectacular celebration to end this SPL season and what a night we've had and uh, the Celtic supporters uh, will party long and hard into the night. It's been a quite incredible turnaround for them in the last 
six weeks. Craig Barley and John Hartson with me in the studio. Both have won the title with Celtic. Craig, where does this one come in terms of achievement? Well, I, I think when you're so far behind, uh, with 46 weeks to go, uh, at that time period, and you make a comeback and you go in that type of run, then you've got to get a huge credit for it. But uh, you know, from Rangers' point of view, they'll just be so deflated, and they put so much into the season. They had it in the bag at one point, only to see it just disappear out of sight. But you know, Celtic did the business. They're the big performers. You know, the centre halves are pretty rock solid today, apart from one mistake in the first half when De Vries almost got in, and Scott McDonald was a revelation for them. Hartley and Robson in midfield, Magedi in the first half as well, Nakamura at times during the season. So they've had big performers. I think if you look at the two sides, Rob, I think Celtic edge it in terms of quality. Uh, Walter Smith pulled off some tactical strokes in the way through the season that got them through. But I think in the long run, Celtic had a better quality player and that shone through in the end. It sends out a signal, John, towards next season as mm -hmm. well, doesn't it? Because it looked at one point as if Rangers were going to come out on top. Celtic have turned it around and that's got to be a real flattener for Walter Smith and his team. Well, it does. I think, I think Walter Smith will be obviously very proud of his players um, for their achievements this year. Getting through the UEFA Cup final was it's no mean feat. You know, it's, they, they, they got through some great ties, but I'm sure he would swap the UEFA Cup run for the title. I, I've got to say that I think inside, Walter Smith will be absolutely devastated. He hasn't, he hasn't halt, halted Celtic's three in a row bid because at one stage Rangers were something like 1-12 or something they were, you know, to, to win the league. And now the Celtic have got three in a row, the impetus is with them, and you, you certainly wouldn't bet against uh, Dermot Desmond, Peter Lowell, pulling out all the stops to keep uh, Gordon Strachan at the football club and giving him the funds, you know, to add to the quality he's got. They go straight in the Champions League, well, you know, that's worth millions to the club. Um, and you certainly wouldn't bet against Celtic going on and winning four or five now, because as I said, the impetus is with them. They're on a great run. Uh, it happened to us a few years back. You know, we, we could, we, Celtic have won six out of the last eight eight SPL titles. You know, two of them have been both on the last day. We could be sitting here and Celtic could be eight eight in a row now. You know, without a little bit of luck on Rangers' side and a little bit of, you know, whatever else you want to say, they scored more goals one year. But as I said, Celtic have certainly got it going now, and they 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 know that. Yeah. They got to strengthen because who's to say if that Rangers run hadn't been, you know, so thick with games and in such a short space of time that it may not have been different. So I think they got to go and strengthen. But you got to feel for Rangers. They put so much into this season, uh, and they've got a Scottish Cup final in two days' time, and they are literally out on their feet. From celebrations to silence at Pataudry, we joined Terry Butcher there. Um, was there any real prospect tonight of Rangers turning this around, Terry? Yeah, I, I felt during the game, I mean, Barry Ferguson drove uh, Rangers forward. I, th I thought he was the best player by a mile for Rangers and, uh, and one or two of his colleagues let him down on the night. But it just, you know, just wasn't there. That spark, the, the partnership up front, uh, Darshville and Kuzan, who were both taken off in the second half with Novo coming on with Chris Boyd, it just didn't work. And uh, we said before the game that Miller and Mackey for Aberdeen could be a, a, a major threat. They scored the goals they were. I mean, Miller got man of the match. He was, he was outstanding. And Ab Aberdeen were outstanding as well. They had their own agenda. I think, you know, I've been in that position before when uh, obviously three years ago to the day as you, as you said that um, you know when, when when Celtic came to Motherwell that everybody wrote Motherwell off and how many goals Celtic would win and all this sort of thing and that does hurt the players and it certainly hurt the Aberdeen players today and uh, you know they're the ones that have um, responded they're the ones that have you know got that fourth place as well uh, unbelievable feat but they're fourth in the league as well and quite a few you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds better off by that uh, placement but Rangers you know Rangers have scored as many goals as Celtic this season but conceded five more so and talk about you know centre halves. I know Craig was on about the two centre halves, and you know quite rightly being praised. Corwell and um, the you know, obviously being Mick, um, be, you know being the uh, winning skipper. Um, the, you know they're the ones that have been steady. They're the ones that have held it together for Celtic. And you know Rangers. We talk about Rangers, Quellar and Weir. They've conceded five goals over 38 games. Doesn't sound a lot, but it's been enough. And you know over the season, you know Rangers haven't produced as good a football as Celtic. I feel. And you know Walter. You know with the players, he has to lift them. That it's less than two days when they play this final. And you know they have to get those uh, their hands on that silverware. But you know you have to say Queen in the South. They've had nearly four weeks to uh, get ready for this game. They'll, they'll fancy their chances and think. Well, you know they they they. Did what they did to Aberdeen, um, you know, and Aberdeen obviously turned Rangers over tonight. You know, they 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 may feel they've got a right good chance on Saturday now. It's got to be hard to bear for Walter Smith uh, lo losing in the UEFA Cup final last week. This week, their title chances gone. Here he is with Keith Downey. 
Walter, well, so how disappointing an end to the season was that tonight? Yeah, it was a disappointing end, um, obviously. Uh, we didn't want it to end that way. Um, we've had a, a good season overall, and uh, you know when it comes to, to that stage and uh, and you lose the last game and then end up losing a the championship, then um, it's, it's disappointing for everyone concerned. People said this week it was a question of how many Rangers would score, but you always knew it would be difficult. No, I mean, it's, a lot of people say that. I said that there would be a disrespect to anybody to talk about um, scoring a, a number of goals You just to go and win the game. We didn't manage to do that. Um, you know, a couple of set pieces against us. A little bit of slack defending, which has, in the last few weeks, started to creep into our game. Um, cost us overall. What was your view on, on that Chernovo's sending off? Obviously disappointing now he'll miss the, the final on Saturday. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, I, I, I don't know whether it, it, it looked as though he made contact with the ball. I've got no um, argument if he, if he missed the ball, then um, you've got no argument in that case. How do you ready the players for a match in, in 41 hours? Well, that's what we have to do. I mean, we, we know that that's what we've got. And as a cup final, it's obviously a big game for uh, MD. So um, our objective must be to try to finish the season um, on a bit of a high, losing a UEFA final last week and you know losing tonight is obviously a big disappointment to everyone. Have the fixtures caught up on you, do you feel? Ugh, I mean, you, you, can, you can look at a lot of things. And certainly the circumstances this season have not been um, ordinary circumstances for us, but it's down to us to, uh, to handle the situation. Uh, we've done very well in doing that up to a point and uh, you know, we didn't do so tonight, so you know, for us it's a a disappointing end, losing out in you know um, two competitions within a week. Thanks for your time, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. Trying to hide his obvious disappointment there, Walter Smith. Back to Terry at Petaudry. And, of course, uh, Walter's big fear now, Terry, will be that this unravels completely for Rangers and they lose the Scottish Cup final against Queen of the South at the weekend. Yeah, well, if they don't start off well in the game on Saturday, then obviously Queen of the South will feel that they have a right good chance. And, uh, you know, Novo's not going to be there. Um, you know, I don't know what he does up front now because he tried two partnerships up there and didn't score, didn't really look like they were going to score um, today. Aberdeen played very well at the back and I go back to um, Sir Alex Ferguson of uh, obviously United when uh, out in Moscow saying a team with a cause is a very hard team to beat and you know, it's, they have that power and obviously with Man United, with Munich, um, with Motherwell this season, Phil O'Donnell and obviously Celtic and Tommy Burns, it's, you know, it's, it's, it can be fate, you can call it what you want. You know, for me, it's big hearts, and uh, you know, people in that Celtic team have big hearts. They they wanted it. I don't, wouldn't say they wanted it more than Rangers, but uh, they certainly, you know, pushed themselves to the to the very limit. Rangers have, you know, they they, they look as though sometimes they're with with one or two players at the tank is you know empty with one or two, but they have one game left of this season, uh, one game to get their second piece of silverware, and it's you know two pieces or two cups that really you would say you know are well down the pecking order compared to the UEFA Cup and the SPL title. But, um, you know, they, they have given it their all. It's been an extraordinary season for Rangers in terms of those games, but uh, they've got one more match to go. Thanks, Terry. I've seen him looking happier. Um, Aberdeen 2-0 winners at Pataudry, they get fourth spot uh, in the SPL and uh, Rangers' title bid is over. As for Celtic, John, um, as we've said already, um, they, they get the, the cash prize that comes with winning the Scottish title and, of course, direct entry into the, the Champions League. You don't have to worry about the qualifiers at the start of next season. Not at all, and I think that would have been on Gordon's mind, you know, while they've been on this run. But, you know, they, they had it all to do, Celtic. You know, they really did. And as I said, they had a mountain to climb sort of five or six weeks ago. They've won twice at Motherwell, which is not easy. They've won back-to-back -back old firm games. You know, and they've come away tonight, a difficult place, and they've done what they had to do. Knowing that Rangers, they've had all this big fixture pile up. It's been very difficult for Rangers. Again, now, they've got to go and pick themselves up for, a, for another huge game on Saturday. You know, Walter would have had the players in the ice baths tonight. He'd probably get them in tomorrow for a little walk. Stretch Saturday morning. What can you do with when you got less than sort of? Well, you got 36 hours to prepare for a Scottish Cup final. So um, in terms of that, you know, Rangers just need to pick themselves up for one final push. It was good to hear from Dermot Desmond tonight. Not a man who gives too many no. interviews and uh, full of big ambitions for Celtic. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got plenty of cash, I believe. So I mean, the fans will be looking for for more of an injection of cash from Desmond or whoever, what other investor wants to put it in. And, and of course, Peter Law was pulling the, the purse strings as well. So I'm sure that's something Gordon Strachan's spoken about with his board, where he can strengthen the side, what he needs, who he can sell, who he can try to get rid of. Don't forget, we've still got people like Boba Baldi on the books, Thomas Gravis and Totti coming back, Donati didn't play a big part in, in his own big wages. So there's much to ponder, much to celebrate for them, but, but a lot to look forward to. And uh, 
You've got to say that they've pulled it out of the bag. They have really pulled it out of the bag. And uh, you know, all the talk about Aberdeen not putting in an effort, Dundee United not putting in an effort, that was just a nonsense. I mean, Aberdeen 2 0 victors. This game was tight tonight, although Dundee United didn't really look like scoring. It was a tight game. It did the SPL proud. It was a cracking finish and it went all the way to the end. This was the goal that completed a magnificent seven SPL wins on the trot for Celtic which overhauled Rangers and gave Celtic the championship. More to come from Tanadice. Oh, and that's big. That's massive. Tiger Woods. Oh, man. Big Santanta. This freak of a man. He must go. Yeah. Freak of the gut. That was quite outstanding. Fantastic. Mixed martial arts. Blockbuster of a goal. Ronaldo. That is absolutely magical. problem might strike. BT offers all business customers 24-7 IT and communication support. Here's to the great British summer. Music festival in mixed mud wrestling, 14 degrees, knobbly knees, catching the rays, the big squeeze. Traffic jams, handheld fans, the hottest day since records began. Yes, we'll complain it's too hot, we'll moan when there's showers, but it's glorious, lovable, eccentric, magnificent and ours. Bournemouth Cider, squeezing the best out of the British summer. At Polaris World, we have a wide range of properties for sale including superb two-bedroom apartments from only €119,000 and magnificent detached villas starting at under €250,000. Enjoy our full range of amenities or simply relax in the sunshine. Call 0800 0233 500 and receive a free discovery pack including a complimentary DVD. Discover life. Discover Polaris World. Theft Auto 4 on Xbox 360. Console from 159.99. Wouldn't it be nice to get a new mortgage and still be able to treat yourself? With the Air Miles Mortgage from Lloyd's TSB, you can now get a mortgage and enjoy a trip somewhere lovely. The Air Miles Mortgage from Lloyd's TSB. For the journey. Just chicken bites brings out your carnivorous side.
Don't take your eye off the ball. Clydesdale Bank, always on the ball. Sunday on Citata Sports 2, first round action from the Leinster Hurling Championship, followed by Fermanagh against Monaghan in the quarterfinals of the Ulster Football Championship from half past one Sunday, Citanta Sports 2. Well, you may be wondering at this point, uh, on the night Celtic are crowned champions and uh, the manager clocks up a hat-trick of titles. Why? We haven't heard from him yet. Well, so are we. He's not talking to us, apparently. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out uh, in the course of time what we have done to upset him. But that doesn't stop us talking about him. Uh, it really is a magnificent achievement uh, for Strachan in his first three years of Scottish football management. Back-to-back uh, -back trophies for him. But... Uh, that will not stop the summer speculation. In fact, it might not <laughs> take as long as summertime. Tomorrow. Will he stay? Will he go? <laughs> do I think he'll stay? Yes, I do. I think he will stay. Uh, I think he likes working for uh, his, his board. I think the people above him, he, he enjoys working for them. I think he, he loves his job. He, you know, he enjoys working with this group of players, certainly. You know, he's brought a lot of these players on. He's made Steve McManus his captain. He's brought Neil Lennon back to, back to the club to help him with his staff. Um, and I think it's time a lot of the Celtic supporters showed him a bit more respect, to be honest. I think they, not too many of the Celtic supporters will be too disappointed if Gordon Strachan leaves the club. You know, that's clear to, to be seen. But I think it is time that they show him a lot of respect, you know, a lot more than what he's been getting. Because what more can the man do? He's been at the club for three years replaced a manager who's arguably a god in the supporters' eyes, Martin O'Neill, who turned the club around when he, came, when he came to the football club in terms of his success right straight away. You know, he's got to the Champions League, um, you know, back-to-back -back again, the second phase, a Scottish Cup, a League Cup. What more does he have to do? His biggest defence, Craig, is that he's apparently not Celtic-minded, mm. apparently. See, uh, well, that, that's some people's perception. I, I don't, I, you know, if that's a crime, then... That it's pretty stupid for me because, as I've said before in this program, you know, Arsene Wenger is not Arsenal minded. Sir Alex Ferguson, mm -hmm. not Manchester United. Jose Mourinho, not Chelsea. It's about doing a good job. It's about being a good manager. But what I do think about Glasgow is there is a shelf life. Uh, I've been in Glasgow and uh, a three to four year period is probably about it. I mean, I've, John was up here for that period. I mean, anybody that does seven, eight, nine years in the goldfish bowl that is Glasgow in the SPL and the pressures that comes with that does very well and I think that may be on Gordon Strachan's mind. I don't re really know the fella, the, the noises we're hearing is that he is probably going. Whether this changes his mind or not, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. But uh, You get the feeling he's, he's so single-minded, maybe not Celtic-minded, but single-minded, yeah. that he's probably made up his mind already and, and yeah. this might not make any difference. Well, we're just speculating, So that and that's all we can do uh, on a night when Celtic have triumphed. Uh, I'm sure if he was talking to us, that's what he'd tell us. But nevertheless, there will be uh, stories tomorrow again, not only about you know Gordon Strachan's future, but about the team uh, and where everything goes from here, because they're always looking ahead, they're always fishing for stuff as we are. Uh, and uh, we don't really know, but uh, nevertheless, he's got three titles. And when he produces his CV, wherever he goes, if he does leave, he'll just go like that. Three league trophies in a row. It won't say Rangers were ahead with six points with four weeks to go. It will just say Celtic champions. And he can do no more than that. Celtic will be happy that they've won the title under their own steam. While Rangers were losing at Pataudry to Aberdeen, they were beating Dundee United here, thanks to Jan Venegor of Hesselink's goal. His 20th goal of the season. It was decisive and any doubts about where the title was ending up went here. Yeah, we've seen him do this a few times this season. I can remember him one at Motherwell a few weeks ago he did this. When he, when he attacks the ball with his height, his power, he's basically unplayable. He's the nearest thing I've seen to Duncan Ferguson in terms of that. When he attacks the ball, when he times his run, he's unplayable and uh, he's a great head. I got Celtic on their way. Let's have a look at the Clydesdale Bank Premier League, the final placings. Here's how the story ends. Celtic are champions. Their win tonight taking them to 89 points and uh, even if Rangers had won at Pataudry, as it happens they lost by two goals to nil. It uh, wouldn't have made any difference whatsoever. It's a third title on the trot for Celtic, that three point winning margin. Mother will finish third into Europe for them and uh, Aberdeen clinch fourth place with their win tonight and that means a fair bit of 
prize money. At the bottom, Gretna, long ago relegated and the fear at the moment, so waiting to be confirmed, of course, uh, is that they are out of business. Coming up on Star of Sports, Lyon chasing a League and Cup double at the Stade de France, the French Cup final against PSG from 5 to 8 to Tanta Sports 2. And next Thursday, next Thursday night, the story of a quite sensational SPL campaign. The SPL story, uh, and that's Thursday night week tonight. 6.30 Satanta Sports 1. All the thrills and spills of the last 10 months. Thanks a lot to Craig, thanks a lot to John as well. A Thursday thriller to end the SPL season. Rangers lost their momentum. Celtic kept the faith, just as Tommy Burns would have wanted. And they wrapped up a title hat-trick from all of us. Bye for now. One, two, three, four... Happy, 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 happy.